Chris, in trying to figure out how we have mental activity, consciousness, or just our sense of self-awareness, coming from that three-pound hunk of meat called <laughs> the brain, there are radically different points of view. Normally, you hear this from philosophers, but I want to talk to a, a neuroscientist about this. So at the one extreme, you'll say, Everything will be ultimately reduced, the reductionism. You'll be able to explain everything in terms of fundamental physics. It may not be for a thousand years, but ultimately we will get there because we can just draw the whole process back from, from brain to circuitry to systems to cells to molecules uh, to atoms uh, and, and ultimately get down to fundamental level. Long time. Second position says, no, that's impossible. There's only the physical world, but at every level of structure, there are new laws, new principles in existence that in principle you will never understand at the lower levels. They only exist at these levels. And then of course some people would say you need something non-physical to make mental uh, stuff out of brain stuff. So along this, I don't know if it's a spectrum, it may be just these, these very big isolated contrasting points, where do you stand? Well, I think it's going to be impossible to take everything down to the physics. I really do believe that there's this hierarchical understanding which is needed of, of, of the elevated functions. I mean, we understand what molecules make up our DNA, but there's a big, big gap between understanding the molecules, the, the electrons spinning around their orbits, right. and understanding DNA and and, and its replication, its mechanisms of, of, of encoding genetic information. I mean, they're, they're, they're two worlds apart. And I, I, I don't think they have, that physics has enough clout to get into the next level up. Well, the question is, can they ever do so? You know, we, we all grant that they're far away from it now, but there are some basic, just to be very simple, a water is wet. Uh, uh, hydrogen and oxygen gases are not wet. But if you put them together in a way and you get enough of these water molecules, you get wetness. And you can explain that through the bonding structure and the, how these molecules relate. It takes a long time, but it's a very simple thing. But you can do that. The question is, can you ever do that in, uh, in, in, in taking mental structures uh, down to physics? Well, if it is going to happen, it's going to be millions of years. <laughs> so, um, you know, I mean, as we understand more and more, I mean, the, the, the boundaries between areas are definitely eroding. That's very true. Mm -hmm. But I still see this as a very difficult, very difficult leap All from right. the physics to the... But I assume you would not go to the, the other extreme and saying that to explain mental function, you need something that is... Uh, beyond the physical world? No, I, I, I do not think you need, I, don't, I, I, I definitely go there. I mean, there's some things which are very difficult to explain, sure, sure. but I think they, 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 they encompass the physical world, which... So then we're left with this interesting problem uh, in terms of the, 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 the laws, the regularities, the understanding at each of the levels of understanding in terms of this hierarchy from physics to mental states. And so, can we begin to at least categorize what some of these levels are? That was, what, in broad strokes, what, what are the levels that can get us from the most fundamental uh, uh, structure of matter to understanding mental states? Well, I think, first of all, we have to understand the mental states. <laughs> I mean, right, we, 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 we don't really understand a lot of mental states. Mm -hmm. um, they all have many, many different etiologies. Um, they all, are, you know, they, they all can be broken up into m many different causes. It's very, we're still at the, we're still scratching the surface of understanding mental states. Mm -hmm. And to now make the leap all the way to, down yeah. to, to physics is, is way, way, way premature, I, yeah. I, I think, in, in my view. What will it take to understand mental states? What progress do you have to make to at least set the parameters of, uh, of, of 
what that ballpark is. What, what do you have to know about them? Well, I'm going back to my, my, my drugs. I mean, we understand certain drugs like hallucinogens. Oh. We understand how they work. We understand that you know, certain hallucinogens like um, uh, acid, you know, a very common hallucinogen. We understand how that works. It binds to the 5-HT2A serotonin receptor. And well, work that through, so that's important. So how does that work? It binds to the, the binds serotonin to the receptor. receptor. So it, 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 it makes it much more intense. It, 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 it then has a specific signaling cascade, which changes the, cortic, the communication between neurons and the cortex. Probably muddles them up a little bit, mm -hmm. um, seeing the hallucinogens sometimes cause, you know, hearing hearing things which should be seen. And mm. There's a sort of muddling up of the cortical input. Mm. And we have a, a state which is, you know, a hallucinogenic state. So we understand exactly how that, how that system works. So we can, you know, drugs are giving us clues here to some of the mental states, but we don't know in a, in a psychotic why they have hallucin why they have hallucinogenic effects that there's probably a totally different etiology for that for those hallucinogenic actions than there is for for um, the, uh, the the 5-HT2A agonists even though the the phenomenology how it feels is similar probably the, the it doesn't feel the same i mean there's many different hallucinogens there's um, uh, salvia, which is another very potent hallucinogen, mm -hmm. which, which is, is still a legal drug and is actually one of, it binds to the kappa opiate receptor. Uh, it's an, another type of opiate receptor and uh, causes its hallucinogenic effects by activating that receptor. Um, so both cause hallucinogenic effects, effects working with completely, completely different Completely different, molecules. different mechanisms. Yeah. Completely different mechanisms. And, and do the hallucinogenic effects, uh, are, are they similar? I mean, do they feel the same or do, how are they different? I can't say they feel. <laughs> I haven't tried these, but, but my, my assumption is that they are that they are different. But you know, I'm the, the problem is that we we describe things which have a, a which which are an umbrella for multiple different different etiologies, mm. and so this is what I'm I'm trying to say is that we still don't really understand. You know, uh, uh, you know, you can get a hallucinogenic effect, but it could be for multiple etiologies, mm -hmm. not just one. And the implications of that is that we're way too soon to be considering these big questions. <laughs> I, I think so, but they're, 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 they are philosophical questions, obviously. And uh, I, I, just, I just think we're, we're just scratching the surface of understanding mental disorders. So we're... we're, we're, we're we're still there. We're still trying to, trying to uh, understand the genetics, although although it's pretty clear that a lot of genetic, uh, there's a, a lot of genetic influence on mental disorders. It's been very very difficult to identify single genes or gene families, mm. which are involved in in a genetic state.